In this video, we're going to talk about why the government doesn't care about inflation. Now, a lot of people have been calling for a stock market collapse. They've been saying that the government is, you know, raising rates. They're fighting inflation. The government has, you know, never raised rates. You know, this is the fastest that the government has done this in all history, etc. And I will tell you through this video, and I said this, I think, back in 2020 during during the midst of the pandemic, when they were talking about the inflation and the government. And I had said the government is trying to inflate the debt away. And so people who are calling for this big collapse and I'm like, no, the government wants inflation. They want inflation so that they can inflate the tax so that they can inflate their debt away. And this is part of this is part of socialism. Again, because people don't own their labor, the government can create dollars to seize your labor, to seize the value of your labor. And this is done not just within the country, but is also done globally. And this is what most Western countries did. And so this is why Janet Yellen, in the beginning of the pandemic, she kept telling Europe to print, print as much money as you can. The reason being was because other countries who were holding dollars or who were holding euros to do global to do global to do business globally would then have the currency that they were holding in their banks be devalued. And what it would do is it would force poor people to work harder to in essence play catch up so that they could buy stuff on the global market for their country so that they could uh, buy commodities across the board because you had most of Europe shut down. So you had all the Americas and most, you know, most European countries, if not all European countries, they all shut down. So during that time period, productivity slowed down. And so what you got from the global economy, and of course the global economy, the supply chain was broken. And so what this did is it caused fewer dollars, whether they were euros or dollars or euro dollars, um, to start chasing fewer goods because now Europe and the Americas were not participating in the global economy outside of, um, you know, what they deemed, you know, ne necessary, right? Whether you worked in a hospital, if you worked in policing, fire, etc., right? In whatever was necessary. And what they did was they flooded the common person with money and they went out and they consumed. They said, you don't have to pay your rent if you were impacted. You don't have to pay your student loans. You didn't have to pay your cell phone bill. You didn't have to pay your gas and electric bill. I mean, shoot, in some places like in L.A., the moratoriums, I think, were just recently removed. And so what you end up with is you end up with a flood of currency leaving the country. Now, of course, the goods eventually from that country, because then you're consuming, right? You're consuming all of these goods from abroad with dollars that you did not earn and you did not supply the economy with anything because you were at home during a pandemic during a pandemic and so this video is from bloomberg and it didn't get that many blue it didn't get that many views this is a video that got about 10,000 views and this is back in 2013 after the crash of 0809 this is right about the time where obama came into office the federal government just started uh, creating money and to expand the economy. And again, a, a, an economy only expands when you offer more goods and more services, not when you print money. An economy is just good, an economy is just services. And so they started printing money and they started handing that out to companies, right? And so we're going to listen to what this gentleman says and then we're going to do an analysis and we have a bunch of articles that we will quickly go over so that you can have a better understanding of what has been going on and how we got here. Some inflation has some benefits. It encourages economic activity. If people think prices are going to rise in the future, they're more likely to buy today. And it's. I'm going to stop right there. So if you follow preppers, right? One of the biggest things, and this is why I said don't follow preppers. And this is I made the and I made this video talking about you know if you're if you if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Every problem looks like a nail, and you only know how to solve it one way. 
And so most preppers were going out there telling people, oh, you better get extra cans. If you buy whatever you buy, buy a little more, right? And it's because the perception, and this is why I said, what you see on social media is what you are designed to see. So when you see these videos and they get tens of thousands of views, it's because they want you to, they want you to see that material. And whether or not these individuals understand what they're doing, let's just say that they don't. Maybe they don't understand economics. But when you believe, and I said this, the government is going to push the narrative of inflation in that video that I did. I said they want to de-inflate the debt away. There isn't going to be a prolonged crash or a recession or anything like that. And this is while I was working here in New York. And so what you get is you get people pushing you to consume. So what is that going to do? It's going to it's going to cause prices to rise because you're perceiving that prices in the future are going to be more expensive, right? And that's what this gentleman just said. Chris Flowers says it does help debtors because you can pay what you owe later with dollars that are worth less. So, you're And that's exactly what the government wants to do. And that's exactly what corporations did. They inflated they, they, in the beginning of the pandemic, right? The government flooded these corporations with debt and the government insinuated that they were going to um, buy much of these bonds from governments and then other people the the market went in and started flooding all of these companies and buying their debt perceiving that the government was going to do that and so they got all this cheap debt at the beginning of the pandemic your money goes a little bit farther that way and other people have been suggesting that we do something along those lines and finally if you get a little again this is in 2000 13. This video is in 2013. And so what you had was you had people who were fearing hyperinflation and fearing inflation. And so they did exactly what he did. The companies got in all this cheap debt at a very low rate and then raised prices because the prices in the future were going to be higher so they could offer a yield now that was higher than what people were getting. They could offer 4%, they could offer 5%. And people were like, oh my God, people are putting out bonds for 5% from corporations, I'm gonna eat that up. And then what happened? Prices for food and for other, other products soared 10%, 20%, 30% for certain foods. And it was because exactly of what this gentleman just said, that they could create a fear narrative now that inflation is going to be higher in the future to justify raising prices. A little bit of inflation. And then inflate that debt that they just issued away. It helps incent companies to invest because they look at something called the real rate. What are they paying for money after inflation? And here's an example. If you look at 1% in interest rate and a 2% rate of inflation, your real rate is negative 1% because you're subtracting inflation from the interest rate. But if you have 0% inflation, which is what we're close to now, you have a 1% interest rate, it's not as good for you. The problem is you don't want deflation. We are seeing many countries and this is what the government pushes on the people. They push the narrative of, oh, the, the, the BRICS nation are, are running away from the dollar. The, 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 the dollar is not going to be the world reserve. You had people talking about the collapse of the uh, economic system that, uh, you, you know, you need to buy gold. You know, the, the, the gold bear, you know, the people that shill gold. And so it drives people into consumption. And so that causes inflation. Now, the companies were issuing out debt, like I said, at 4 and 5%. And the government, too. The government was putting out treasuries at 4%, almost 5% unheard of. But what's the inflation rate? The inflation is much higher. The inflation is close to 20% of what people are paying in the stores. So what happens, right? The government gets all of this cash early on, buys the things that they need, and then raises the rate of goods and services and then the people go out there and they demand they demand more money and i said this before in another video what does it do when people go on strike it allows the government to reap more via taxation from the people because all they do is they just end up going higher in a tax bracket it's all percent based so if you get a raise of you know like, like those truck drivers in new york city that from ups that are now getting like 130 or 170 whatever their package was the government's sitting there rubbing their hands like this is fantastic because we're gonna pull more money out of the economy via taxation 
And so the corporations don't have to worry about it because they're just going to charge you. They're just going to charge you more money for the service of shipping. And so people see prices rise. And it's exactly what he said because the inflation rate was really low. And so how do you how do you how do you stimulate inflation to be higher at a time period where you're going to issue debt? So you're issuing out all this debt right in the very beginning. You go out there and you buy everything that you need and then boom, you raise prices. You create a narrative of fear, uncertainty and doubt and you get people to go out there and rush out there and consume. What does that do? It gives them the narrative because now people are pulling everything off of the shelf and you're seeing scarcity at the store. And so people were showing, if you looked on YouTube, there were so many videos. People were like, oh my God, the food shelves are empty. Right? You probably saw this narrative too of Walmart and all these different stores and all the stores, they're barren. They're like, oh my God, go out there and buy everything now before, before you can't buy nothing. Go out there. Right? And I said this before, how do you create a market? And I said this with, 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 when they were talking about banning guns. You create demand by artificially creating scarcity. Oh, we're going to put a ban. We're going to put a ban on guns. We're going to we're going to buy bullets. There's going to be a shortage of bullets. Going to, we're going to create a legislature. And what does everybody say? You better go out there and go what? Consume. You better go out there and buy more. So what happens to the price? Price goes higher. And this is what I said before. This is very. It's just so Fighting obvious. Fighting that off at this point, that's harder to get out of because there's no real incentive for the that the Federal Reserve or other central banks can use. Uh, and again, the chief tenant of Marxism is central banking. And so you heard what he's what he had said. There's no incentive for deflation. Prices going down. Why? Central bank orthodoxy. Since the 1970s, when we had the big inflation scares, that inflation is always terrible. And so they're more bent on fa fighting that than allowing too much extra inflation. Okay, so as far as which fear you can bring upon people first, which is stronger, inflation or deflation? Well, right now it seems more people are worried about deflation than most of the large co economies of the world. Who's worried about deflation? Are you worried about prices going down? Who are the people he's referring to? Right? He said that people are fearful of prices going down. Who? Are you? Are you worried about paying less for goods and services? World are experiencing declining inflation rates. We call that disinflation. They don't want to get into a deflationary period like Japan has gotten into because it is, as I say, very, very hard to get out of. Uh, deflation is a ter terrible tax on people because not only do they... A tax on who? Who is it a tax? Tax on people, but what people? Stop buying because they think prices are going to fall, but then wait... People stop buying because they think prices are going to go cheaper. So people don't consume. Who benefits from consumption? You or the people who own the businesses that you're consuming, right? So who are the people that are not incentivized by disinflation? It's not you, the customer. It's the people selling you the goods and services that are, that are, that are, that are not incentivized. Wages start to go down and you now naturally wages will start to go down because prices are being prices are coming down people get fired because the economy starts to slow down because people are perceiving that prices are going to continue to fall which is okay there's nothing wrong with falling prices like I said before in a free market you typically have cheaper prices as things become more readily available uh, as things become more readily available, they naturally become cheaper, right? If you've ever played, like I said, I, I made this reference before. If you've ever played an MMO, you look at the auction houses and MMOs, the prices come down because where prices are high, people tend to flood that market. And what happens, right? You get more availability, more, or more availability leads to ch cheaper prices. And so you get to the point where stuff is just so readily available at the auction houses that you can do whatever you want with your time. Now you don't have to spend, you know, hours farming. You can go out and go PVP. You can go out and go run dungeons. You can go out and explore the world. You can do what you want. And that's exactly the problem is that you're disincentivized to work. That's the problem. In a free market, people can create a whole bunch of stuff and then just leave it up there. Hey, buy it, buy it when you need it. Instead, people are pushed and driven towards consumption start to see this spiral lower but because you can't affect the real rate you don't and what happens is, is that their existence is based off of you so when you stop working they can't tax you 
this really point. have a way to automatically get out of it, a lever you can pull. All right. Now, how would central banks go about creating inflation? Should well, you they could, wish to? You could do like the, the traditional way of just flooding the economy with money, and that's what the Bank of Japan is going to try to do. The old Milton Friedman uh, thing of. Too, too much money chasing too few goods, and they hope that's going to raise the price level. Or you can try to influence inflation. Exp you hear what he said? The old Milton Freud, right? Too much money chasing too few ser goods and services, right? You break the supply chain, right? Then this is what they told you. Oh, the, the reason why, uh, because of the pandemic, because they wanted inflation. They wanted inflation. You break the supply chain. And you get too few goods now being created because the supply chain is broken. Too many dollars chasing, chasing too few goods. And so what does this cause? It causes inflation. And so it allows the government to inflate their debt away and cause inflation in other countries. Expectations, kind of like what the Fed's doing with its July 2015 promise to keep rates steady even if the economy picks up. Now, some people say we should go beyond that and target nominal GDP, uh, which is non inflation adjusted GDP. If you think you got a 2% growth rate, then if you're going to have a 4% target, you automatically assume, investors in theory, assume you're going to have 2% inflation. And that helps move things higher. But at this point, a lot of problems with that. How do you exactly do it, especially since they revise GDP all the time? How do you know what the number actually is? Nothing like but it's something that's target. getting a little more traction. More people talking about it these days because they're worried about disinflation. And they want to get the economies. Again, the people who are worried about disinflation is not you, the customer. It's the business owners. It's the people who control all the assets at the top. And so that means that they'll make less money. It means that the government will, 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 make, will make less money via taxation. And so he talked about Japan, how Japan has disinflation. And this is, this is the point. This is, for, uh, this, is a, can't, this, this article came out back in 2020. For the past 50 years, hard work has brought the poor nothing. And that's exactly, that's exactly the point. They keep the people poor, which is what he talked about in that video, right? We have to create the narrative of inflation and cause people to go out and consume. Create inflation, which drives the people into poverty. What does that do? What are people doing now, right? You see people with one job, two job, a side hustle, people worried about getting fired. The whole narrative of AI is going to take your job. What does that do? It, it makes people less willing to fight for raises or it makes people... Uh, more willing to accept their lot in life to re to re to remain impoverished, and so the system that he was referring to about what was, what was going on in Japan is not is not a new one. It's an old one. And again, Japan's welfare state and the reason why Japan was experiencing deflation was because they're an ethno state, and they as a result of having to push everybody into the workforce, you can only tax people so much, so that you can either raise the percentage of their taxes or force the people to work longer hours. And so Japan's economic system was mimicked. And this is why I said a very long in my previous video that America got other people. They needed people to come into the Ponzi scheme. And so they dragged Japan into the Ponzi scheme of social Marxism. So this beginning in the 1920s, the Japanese government enacted a series of welfare programs. This happened also in the early 1900s um, with the United States of America in 1917 when they adopted um, the Federal Reserve Act. And then by 1935, they issued their very first welfare program, which was Social Security. And so it goes on to state um, the welfare programs based mainly off of European models to provide medical care and financial support. And when you push welfare into the, in, again, when you push welfare in the beginning, right, the people who benefit the most are the people that get to the welfare, to, that get to the Ponzi scheme early. And so this is why the boomers had this fantastic life. They, they were able to afford whatever they wanted because the government was just flooding all of this currency into the economy and you see this boom in the economy and people were getting so much so much wealthier and then as the country expands with people then you have cheaper labor right the labor costs go down but you have a huge welfare program so as more people start entering into those welfare programs 
because people realize at some point you get more elderly people that require more of those healthcare programs, right? And so what they put into the system is not what they're getting out of the system. And so you need ever increasing amounts of people to then participate into the Ponzi scheme. And eventually Japan ran out of people. And it's because you had less people that were working, right? The, the Japanese birth rate hits record low amid concerns over a shrinking and aging population. And so at the very beginning of the Ponzi scheme, when you have a, a young a young base to work with, right? When Japan started this Ponzi scheme, the people were young. Now the people are old and they weren't having children because there was so much money. We didn't have to worry about having a family to take care of us in our old age. There was so much money. They were like, shoot and the government created this program, we don't have to worry about having children. Now those people who are late to the party are experiencing the ramifications of the choices that were made 100 years ago. And so what you end up with is you end up now with a group of men in Japan who are called the, the Haikikomori. You have a large demographic of men that just don't want to work. And Japan has one of, or is it, Japan has some of the longest working hours in the world and it's trying to change and it can't because it's inflated. The economy is inflated with all of this welfare programs that the only thing that they can do is tax the people more and force them to work longer hours. And this is what you get. And this is why many of the Japanese men don't want to participate. The same thing is happening in China with the lying down movement. And this is what you get in social marxism um and of course again like i talked about via taxation this is the first change that needs to be made and this is in reference to japan this is as before anything else is taxation japan has among the highest tax rates in the world with a top marginal rate on personal income personal income tax 45 percent combined with a 10 percent residential tax and a temporary surtax of 2.1 percent and you have social security taxes High earners can hand over almost 60% of what they earn to the government. Moreover, inheritance tax at a rate of 55%. So you leave less than half of what you've accumulated. You leave it to the government, right? Because this is what you get in Marxism. You get poverty. And when you eventually run out of children, and this is what's happening with J to Japan, and what you, what you really end up running out of is what was coined by um, famous British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher when she had said the she had said the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money and that's exactly what's happening it's a system that is not designed to last for a very long time and eventually as she goes on to state um, that while government handouts may sound good someone still has to foot the bill and so this is what you end up this is why the border is open because they need people to tax right they need other people's money and the government doesn't have money the government takes money from you the taxpayer to give it to somebody else right to pay for all these social programs someone has to pay the bill that someone is you the working class the remaining ones and so this is why you see inflation this is why you see raising rising taxes and in this system all the wealth goes to the top this is what you end up with because the people don't own their labor because the government can devalue their labor and so the only thing that you see many young men doing is they just say we're just not going to participate this is why you have something like uh seven a little over seven million american young young men in america that are just not willing to work and so the only thing that the government can do is they have to open the borders because they need people. This is what you see all of Europe. All of Europe is wide open, right? This is where you see all these migrants coming into the country. It's not an invasion. It's because of the welfare state. The welfare state and socialism doesn't work and it ends in collapse. And so as Margaret Thatcher said, at some point you end, you run out of other people's money. Japan ran out of other people's money when they stopped having children because the women were like, the government will take care of us. I don't have to worry about it. They're like, hey, they got all these welfare programs. Somebody's gonna, somebody else is gonna pay for me to retire. And at some point, that that Ponzi scheme goes belly up, and it all gets exposed. And so the only thing that the governments can do is create inflation. That's the only thing they can do, because if the people aren't willing to have more money, if the people aren't willing to have kids, then the only thing that you can do is pull in via. Um,
you know, the only thing you do is pull in via immigration. But the people in Japan don't want immigration. So what you end up with is more inflation and a stagnating economy. And people don't want to work. The young people don't want to work. And this is what socialism produces. And this is why I had said a very long time ago, the only reason that it works in the United States is because other countries are forced to hold on to dollars. Otherwise, we would be like Japan. We would be like many of these other countries that have tried um, socialism. But the only reason that it works is because we, the American government forces countries under threat of bombs and bullets that if you don't use our currency, well, then we're going to bring democracy to your nation. And this is what you see going on in Israel. This is what you see going on in Russia. This is what you see going on in many Middle, Middle Eastern countries where they eventually will run out of people to play this Ponzi scheme. And so the only thing that's going on right now, this is why I had said before, that if you follow like a lot of um, European YouTubers, they talk about the dystopian bills and laws that are being passed of, uh, we're going to watch you, we're going to have carbon tax, and we're going to have a, a different, all these different taxes, right? We're going to survey you, we're going to have a meat tax, and if you travel, we're going to tax you. This is what you get. This is what you get. You have the American government sitting at the top via the United Nations or the World Health Organization, whatever you want. And they just use whatever excuse, uh, pandemic treaty, uh, climate change, um, for your health, you know, what, whatever narrative that they need to cause those resources to come to the top, to the, to the top percentage of those in government in the United States, those who run these countries right this is this is what you this is what you end up and this is what is going on globally now and what has been going on globally for the better part of 100 years via central banking uh which is the foundation for socialism and this is why i say that we live under a global communist socialism for the people anyway i'm gonna leave it here really long video Feel free to leave your comment below. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you like the content. And I'll check you next time.